participant of the IOMP school webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening as your time zone is. I welcome on behalf of IOMP to this first IOMP school webinar. As you know very well, because of the COVID-19, the physical meetings are not possible. And therefore, IOMP has decided to have the webinars every monthly. And the first webinar today we were having, and our speaker is Professor K.Y. Chung. Fortunately, we have today uh, Professor Madan Rehani, who is the IOMP president, and with his guidance and encouragement, we are able to start this IOMP school. So I request Professor Madan Rehani, the president of the IOMP, to give the welcome remarks for this first IOMP school webinar. Professor Madan Rehani, it's you to give us the blessings and the welcome. Thank you, Arun. I am indeed delighted to welcome you all participants on behalf of IOMP. Many thanks for participation in such a large number. We had been having webinars uh, uh, since 2016, but jointly with IAEA, with IAEA hosting them. So we joined IAEA and that's how we had been continuing for some years. And now during uh, the International Medical Physics Week, we decided to have our own webinar series during that week. So the first webinar series of IUMP through IUMP school was conducted during the week of IUMP, uh, IMPW, that is International Medical Physics Week. The huge sex success of the webinar series during that week and the demand by participants made us look forward to further organizing webinars. So education training committee was asked to organize some webinars and today webinar is organized by the education training committee of IUMP. Thanks to Arun for organizing this webinar and thanks to Dr. K.Y. Chung for his willingness to speak on this very, very important topic, which is very advanced topic. We are going to have more of webinars. Next week itself, there is going to be a webinar series starting with the artificial intelligence. So the first webinar in the artificial intelligence will be uh, held next week, Tuesday. You may have received the information uh, half an hour before in the IUMP newsletter and uh, we, uh, you should join the artificial intelligence and machine learning series of webinars. We have encouraged all our colleagues uh, in the XCOM of IUMP to think of organizing webinars so there could be more but we don't want to overdo also. So stay tuned and you will get to know more about it. And I finally, I wish to th thank Magdalena for technical support for this webinar series. And thank you once again, all for joining the webinar and thanks uh, Arun and K.Y. Chow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Madan Rahani for this uh, uh, welcome remarks and uh, also emphasizing on the medical physics education and training and the importance of the webinar. So dear participant, this webinar will be recorded and the recording will be available on the IOMP website. Uh, I request all of the participants to the, put off their cameras and uh, mute themselves because the bandwidth will not be shared. Uh, you can ask the questions through the chat. I will try to collect as many as questions and I will try to put to K.Y. Chung for this uh, uh, webinar which we'll be having today. Just trying to share. Okay, so today's webinar 
that is the first webinar of the IOMP school and uh, this is on topic physics aspect of clinical implementation of MR LINAC. As you very well know that prerequisite for a successful radiotherapy treatment is that patient setup is exactly the same between the treatment and the simulation what you have done. Patient's anatomy does not change between the treatment and the simulation when you transfer the patient from one machine to another. Internal organs and does not move during radiation dose delivery margins is used to compensate localization errors. Small margins, insufficient tumor coverage will be there. Larger the margin, normal tissue toxicity will be there. And therefore, imaging plays a very big role in planning and execution of radiotherapy. Imaging has always played a critical role in radiotherapy. And we started with a 2D planar imaging that is from the radiography to EP to KV, MV, X-rays, then 3D volumetric imaging, MVCT, KVCBCT, MVCBCT, CT, non-radiological imaging like ultrasound, optical imaging, 4D beam CT. However, all these imaging modalities has a limitation because of the use either the ionizing radiation or the sound waves. So soft tissue contrast is not as good as MR and no biological information and unnecessarily ionizing radiation added was there if you are going to do repeat imaging. And therefore, this uh, MR LINAC has come up, which on board you have MR uh, imaging, which uses a very good soft tissue delineation, good contrast, and the biological information. And to deal this advantages and also the limitations and uh, the challenges for the medical physicist while using this MR LINAC right from the installation to further this thing, we have uh, Professor K.Y. Chung for this talk. I would like to introduce shortly Professor K.Y. Chung. Ken In Chung is a senior medical physicist at uh, uh, the Medical Physics Research Department of Hong Kong Sanitarium Hospital in Hong Kong. He is also the adjunct professor of School of Medicine in Health Sciences, Waha College, adjunct associate professor, Department of Clinical Oncology, University of Hong Kong, and adjunct associate professor, Department of Clinical Oncology, Chinese University of Hong Kong. He is the chairman of the Hong Kong Institution of Physicists in Medicine. He is the founding president of the AFOM, which was formed on 28th May 2000. 20th anniversary we are celebrating. So we are fortunate to have him as a founding president of the FO. He is also the past president of the IOMP and past president of the IUPSM. With this short remarks and introduction, now I invite Professor K.Y. Chung to give his first hand experience, actual experience, because in his hospital, the MR Limac the NAC has been installed and is being used. So now I invite Professor K.Y. Chung for delivering this talk. And again, I request all of you to listen to the lecture and any questions are there put to the chat. So I will try to uh, ask these questions put to K.Y. Chung for the answers to your satisfaction. So K.Y. Chung, it's your floor to start with these things. Thank you, Dr. Professor uh, Chocoli, for the kind introduction. Uh, and uh, welcome, everyone, and good evening, uh, good morning, or good uh, 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 afternoon to everyone who, wherever you are. It's my pleasure to uh, give the first uh, IOMP school uh, webinar. Uh, let me have my PowerPoint, please, uh, Professor uh, Chocoli. Good. Okay. 
So I'm going to uh, share with you uh, a bit of our experience on uh, the clinical implementation of uh, our first uh, MR Linux in Hong Kong. Uh, particularly, I shall uh, talk about the key features of the uh, MR Linux, which is the model Unity. Uh, we shall, I shall talk about the uh, uh, beam data measurements, uh, validation of the planning computer system, uh, and uh, validation of treatment delivery, uh, machine QA, and also uh, patient-specific QA. Our system was uh, first in, uh, start our installation uh, in August uh, two years ago, 2018. Uh, we treated our first patient uh, on 15 July 2019. Uh, by now, we have treated about uh, 40 uh, patients. Now, the Unity uh, is designed to give um, online uh, MR guided radiation therapy. Uh, it can uh, generate MR images for patient positioning. Uh, it can, uh, with the MR images, uh, that can be fused, uh, registered with uh, 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 planning uh, CT or planning MR images for doing adaptation planning and uh, delivery online. Uh, it can also uh, perform real-time imaging while the beam is delivered. Uh, it can also, of course, do uh, uh, response monitoring, uh, treatment response uh, monitoring uh, during the course of the patient treatment. Now, uh, let's go to a bit of the uh, uh, machine itself. Now, uh, this shows the basic uh, structure of the machine uh, on top is the uh, waveguide. Uh, it's a 7 MV uh, photon beam FFF uh, uh, radiation beam. Uh, it goes through the collimators and the beam monitors uh, onto the patient. Uh, at a, uh, the ISO center is, is 1.345 meters away from the source. And after the patient, it goes to a, uh, a, pot, a uh, MV uh, imager. Uh, it's not for patient setup, this imager. It's for uh, QA and uh, uh, beam alignment purpose. And then there is a beam stopper to reduce the uh, transmission uh, and, and also reduce the amount of shooting required. And the key performance uh, of the uh, unity is it can generate 400 centigrade per minute dose rate. Uh, the maximum fuel size is 57.4 in the X uh, direction, the lateral uh, transverse direction, and 22 uh, cm uh, in the uh, Y axis. So it's a uh, rectangular field, um, maximum fuel size. Uh, it has uh, 80 pair of leaves uh, and the leaf width at the ISO center is slightly over seven millimeters uh, because of the uh, uh, ISO center length. Uh, so it's slightly uh, thicker than uh, the conventional uh, Versa HD Linux. Uh, the bore size for treatment is 70 cm. Uh, it comes with a dedicated uh, treatment planning computer, uh, Monaco uh, system. It's a Monte Carlo based uh, uh, calculation engine, so it's uh, pretty accurate. Now, this shows the roadmap of the testing and commissioning process. Uh, after machine installation, uh, we will do the acceptance test uh, and uh, after that, we will do the beam data collection uh, and the beam data will then send to the elector team for modeling uh, into their uh, Monte Carlo uh, algorithm, um, beam model. And after that, we will do the uh, validation of the beam model comparing the uh, uh, calculated uh, beam data against water tank measurement and then if that is satisfactory, we will do uh, 
those calculation uh, validation, single beam in homogeneous and in homogeneous uh, uh, phantom, uh, and then end-to-end uh, -end tests uh, uh, using phantoms, uh, 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 testing the whole system. Uh, after that, we will do uh, some quality uh, protocol and also patient QA protocol before go live. And this uh, gives some idea of what the testing and commissioning process will be involved. Uh, most of them basically in principle is the same as conventional uh, Linux, uh, except uh, a few things. Uh, one is uh, it has an MR system inside the machine so uh, there are MR uh, aspects in terms of quality control uh, and uh, utilization, patient setup, and so on. And also it has a map because of the uh, MR system, the magnetic field will uh, make a lot of um, things quite challenging to do, particularly uh, you need to have some uh, dedicated tools uh, MR compatible tools for uh, beam data measurement, quality control, and so on. Uh, and also the geometry of the system, it has a ball of limited size. So uh, a lot of your uh, equipment would not be uh, applicable to this machine. And also some procedures uh, would be different uh, because of this. Apart from that, um, the process or the concept behind would be similar to a Linux. Uh, as I said, uh, it has an MR system uh, built in uh, in the machine. So uh, apart from radiation safety, you need to uh, be aware of the uh, magnetic field safety. So uh, the control of access to the area inside the machine and also uh, in the the whole area would be uh, controlled to ensure that uh, no one uh, will carry a metal object of for a magnetic uh, nature in his or her pocket or inside her body uh, to ensure safety of uh, herself or himself or to other people in the area, uh, inside the human room. Uh, as I said, uh, it has a uh, uh, imaging, uh, mega voltage imaging system. And this system is for alignment of the machine as well as for quality assurance. It's not for uh, patient setup. Uh, you will find this useful for uh, in many aspects. For example, uh, you can uh, do uh, a Winston Luck test uh, to check to measure the isocenter uh, accuracy. Uh, in our case, it's 0.3 millimeters. Uh, and also, uh, as you know, uh, MR imaging uh, tends to be uh, the uh, geometrical accuracy is a concern, especially certain fast imaging uh, sequence where uh, there are distortions uh, in the Im images. So uh, in the uh, scan imaging sequences uh, 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 developed by uh, Philips and Electa, uh, for the uh, imaging system of the MR system, uh, it has quite pretty low uh, geometrical distortion. For example, uh, with a 30 cm diameter imaging square, uh, the uh, accuracy of the of the uh, dimension is within one millimeter. And 35 cm diameter, uh, the error is within two millimeter. Uh, for 40 c uh, cm uh, volume, uh, the error is within 2.5, uh, and that is the um, uh, the uh, geometrical distortion data for this machine. Now, um, it, magnetic field do interact uh, to have some effect on dosimetry measurement. Uh, because of Lorentz force, the magnetic field tends to um, assert a force on moving electron. Uh, 
uh, depending on the orientation, they tend to move it sideways. So it affects the, uh, the beam data itself. Uh, it also affects the detector response. Uh, because of this, uh, it affects the slightly change the effective point of measurement of ion chambers. It shifts the depth of maximum of percentage depth dose curve uh, to the surface a little bit. Uh, and also it affects the uh, this amount of uh, effect on the response of detector depending on the orientation of the detector with the magnetic field. Uh, furthermore, it also have uh, affects the uh, measurements uh, in phantom where air gap exists between phantom and chamber. So it would uh, create some challenges to our QA um, uh, procedures. Now, uh, as I mentioned earlier, magnetic fields uh, tends to change the path of electron, moving electrons. Uh, because of that, uh, the magnetic field uh, are, tends to push the electron sideways and instead of, Is there a uh, something? Can you see the PowerPoint clearly? Because on my computer, a lot of something is blocking my view. No, no, it's okay, fine. Okay, yeah. okay, now, okay, okay, let's go back to my slide. The, um, on this diagram, you can see that uh, the profile tends to shift to one side with the magnetic field. Uh, uh, without magnetic field is uh, nice and straight as what you see in your uh, linear equator. Uh, and this on the right is the those distribution of uh, in uh, the color uh, of the uh, of the uh, uh, radiation beam, so it's slightly tilted uh, to one side. Okay, thanks. Uh, it has moved, removed the. Okay, good. So such effect uh, is in fact taken into account by the uh, planning computer system, uh, the Monte Carlo algorithm correct for such uh, uh, effect of the uh, magnetic field on electron path. So we can uh, calculate the dosimetry uh, accurately. I cannot change my slide. Oh, uh, uh, just I think, uh, uh, Brace one, go down. Okay, down. now I can do it now. Maybe my yeah, computer yeah. was hanged somehow. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Now, uh, this on top of the uh, row of uh, diagrams, we have the uh, field profiles uh, with and without magnetic field along the x axis, the transfer axis. You can see on the left, the red lines are the profile with magnetic field and the black lines are normal uh, same machine but we found that with the magnetic field turned off so you can see a slight displacement and then on and the one in the middle is five by five cm field and the right the one on the right is 10 by 10. so there is a slight shift of about 1.2 to 1.5 millimeter uh, laterally uh, depending on the direction of the uh, of the uh, field line, and the three diagram on the bottom is the field profile along the y-axis along the uh, longitudinal axis of the machine. So there is no shift in the beam profile. The both uh, uh, profile with and without and the field uh, are the same, and these are the Depth dose percentage, depth dose curve of, uh, for example, on the left is two by two field si uh, CM uh, field size. The red, the line uh, shown in red is the depth dose curve with the 1.5 T uh, Tesla magnetic field turned on. And the black is the 
uh, depth dose curve we found magnetic field. And the, similarly, on the right is a 10 by 10 field size. So the depth percentage depth dose with the peak shifts uh, towards the surface slightly. And these are the data of surface dose measurement. Uh, as you expect, uh, the surface dose for an uh, MR index is much lower than a conventional index without magnetic field. Uh, the dots shown in pink, uh, rectangular, rectang uh, the uh, triangular dots shown in pink, uh, surface dose measure using film. And the dots shown in red, uh, uh, surface dose measure using Marcus uh, window chamber, parallel chamber. So they agree pretty well. The blue line uh, with uh, triangular blue dots are computer calculation. Uh, there is a slight difference, a few percent difference between measurement and calculation. We are trying to figure out the reason for the discrepancy. And the black line is the uh, surface dose of uh, the same linear without magnetic field. So the surface dose is much more uh, compared with the uh, uh, MR uh, uh, limit. Okay, uh, in commissioning the planning computer, as I said, uh, we have to measure the beam data and then uh, send the beam data for modeling. And then we do the validation of the beam uh, calculation and uh, treatment plan uh, delivery. And the beam data required uh, it's not too many. Uh, for uh, we have to measure the percentage that those uh, and field profile in in plane and cross plane uh, in uh, three different depths for few sizes uh, ranging from two by two up to the maximum of fifty seven by twenty two. And we use micro diamond for field size uh, smaller than 10 and use a semi-flex, a small chamber, ionization chamber for measuring from five by five to 70 uh, to the maximum field size. So there is an overlap uh, between uh, five by five to 10 by 10, uh, 10 to ensure the beam data, just check the beam data are consistent when we use different detectors. And we do a diagonal scan uh, for the maximum field size at three depths. We also uh, measure for gantry to 70 degree uh, for a few, few sizes of percentage depth dose, uh, in-plane and cross-plane profile uh, for uh, beam modeling. And we also measure a the dose, absolute dose at uh, gantry zero and gantry 270 at certain specified points. And this is the beam, the uh, water tank that we use. Initially, Electra uh, provide the water tank because we didn't have a uh, one. Now we do have one. It's quite expensive one. Uh, it's the only tank uh, uh, suitable for measuring uh, unity beam data is the PTW beam scan MR. Uh, the, so far, it's only one available in the market. There may be more uh, coming, we don't know, but this is a suitable one, and uh, we have using, been using it. Fully MR compatible, uh, and for uh, the tank and motors, and also the chambers and detectors. Another uh, parameters we need to measure is the output variation with gantry angles uh, because of uh, the cryostat of the MR system uh, is non-uniform in terms of attenuation at different angles. So we measure for every two degree the output uh, and then uh, have this uh, output variation uh, for be modeling. A total variation is within 2.5%. Now, the next thing we need to do is uh, the absolute dose calcul uh, calibration. 
And we have to use water phantom and we uh, use the IAEA TRS-98. And this equation should be familiar uh, to you, except this factor, KB, is the factor correct for uh, chamber response uh, due to magnetic field effect. And this factor is available from a uh, paper by uh, O'Brien uh, in the Medical Physics Journal. And he and his group at MD Anderson and also the group in Utrecht has done a lot of measurement of, me of radiation beams uh, in Unity uh, Linux. So uh, their publications are very useful for commissioning of, your, of our uh, MR Linux. Now, these are typical uh, beam uh, validation that we went through. Uh, on the left is two by two field, uh, percentage depth dose, superimposing the computer calculated dose, uh, depth dose and also measure our beam data measured uh, using water tank. Uh, and the criteria for acceptance is 2% uh, those uh, difference and two millimeter uh, uh, distance to agreement, and they fall well within this criteria. And for 10 by 10 field, for example, and 40 by 22 cm field, and they look pretty, pretty good. And for the profile, and uh, on the left is two by two cm, uh, zero degree gantry. On the right is cm field size at 270 degree gantry, and they match pretty well. And this is a profile of 10 by 10 at 270 degree, just some example. And large field size, 57 by 22 uh, for gantry zero. And the output factor, uh, the line shown in light blue is computer calculation and the one shown in dark blue is measurement, our measurement data. They agree pretty well. And these are typical uh, single beam in phantom uh, validation. Uh, so we make exposure um, uh, and then do measurement and then compare with calculation. Uh, we do uh, for different phantom uh, homogeneous, inhomogeneous, different field sizes, different gantry angles, and uh, check each one of them. And one in, in interesting effect is the electron return effect, which is quite uh, uh, um, uh, different from what you see in conventional linear, in that electron tend to uh, move in a circular path because the influence of the magnetic field, especially the low energy electrons. So some of them return back to its original path uh, in this case. So this is a plot, a computer calculation of a five by five field. Uh, in between, uh, in the solid water phantom, in the middle is a lung phantom, a lung slab of sort of uh, of a uh, uh, solar phantom. So you can see that the, there is a hot uh, um, spot along the surface of the solar water phantom. Uh, and the, we gave, and the dose in fact is higher uh, than the dose is uh, or close to the dose at Dmax. So you can see that the re electron re return effect is quite significant. And this gives some implication on treating certain disease sites where uh, you may have uh, the beam uh, exit the, the, the skin where the uh, back scan, uh, the return electron can cause skin burn. So uh, something need to be uh, considered uh, in your planning. Now, and then after that, we do a end-to-end uh, -end, uh, phantom treatment 
a delivery from MR scan and, and then do a bit of uh, adaptation uh, planning and then uh, deliver the treatment as though the phantom is a patient. And this phantom, uh, and then we can transfer uh, this plan, uh, this just like a patient, transfer a patient plan to an arc check, to a um, sun nuclear arc check uh, system, and then do an arc check plan uh, irradiation, and then uh, uh, measure the dose and also the gamma analysis to see uh, if they agree with the uh, treatment plan. So after everything is done, we have done quite a lot of tests, different plan of, di of uh, uh, different size and shape of structure and uh, um, uh, different phantoms. Uh, once that's done uh, and you are happy with the result and then we would go to a quality assurance of the machine before patient treatment. Uh, in just like your uh, conventional Linux, uh, in that you have to develop your QA uh, procedures and protocol, uh, and then uh, develop your own uh, patient uh, plan uh, QA uh, protocol before uh, uh, treating of the first patient is to ensure that the machine uh, is uh, running properly. Uh, every day, and also the uh, treatment plan are accurate, and also the beam delivery by the machine is also accurate. And for the daily QA, uh, I can go for a few, uh, some mechanical tests as recommended by the manufacturer, by elector. So we normally check the certain parameters of the machine, uh, and also uh, the laser, the sagittal laser uh, system. And we warm up the machine, check the safety interlock, just like your conventional relax. Uh, there is no light field for patient setup. So we rely on the MV imager for checking the field size. So we do a field size check using the MV imager. And we also do a, a daily constancy check using uh, solid water, a uh, solid uh, water phantom. Now for this phantom, uh, because of the time uh, limit, so we uh, take a easy uh, way, put the phantom flat on top on, on the couch so that we cannot put water in the, into, the, um, into the insert to reduce the gap. So we just leave the uh, chamber as it is and mark the orientation of the chamber so that it, it is uh, put in the uh, uh, inserted exactly the same orientation every time. So try to minimize the, uh, the inconsistency of the, uh, of the gap. And, and also we do uh, MR and CT fusion just to check, make sure that the adaptation planning uh, is uh, uh, is uh, doable by at least the Emma is functioning and also the fusion software is functioning. And also we do a uh, quality check on the uh, Emma uh, image in terms of signal to noise uh, geometry. And then we do a, a go to the weekly uh, QA. Uh, now in the weekly output uh, uh, monitor, we do it uh, in a more stringent way. We put the chamber vertical so that we can put water into the, into the uh, um, uh, chamber insert so that uh, there is no gap, no air gap uh, between chamber and the uh, phantom. And we put it in uh, along the center so that the chamber is near the isocenter, near the isocenter. And we do uh, make exposure uh, at 270 degree and also 90 degree so that uh, the beam is normal to the chamber. 
And we also use the MV imager to check the location of the chamber so that it's exactly the same location every time. And these are typical the uh, data we have over the past year. On top, on the green and black dots are the weekly uh, output dose measurement, and they fall within 1%. And in certain occasion, we do need to adjust the uh, output slightly. And the bottom is the daily uh, constancy output. Uh, it's fall within 2%, uh, and except uh, in location when uh, uh, in three loca uh, occasion that we need to adjust. Uh, when we farm uh, a daily output is exceeded 2% tolerance, we do a, um, a, uh, a, a more accurate uh, uh, dose check. And then when that is also uh, off the tolerance, we do adjustment and so on. And we also do a weekly uh, picket fence check on the, uh, on the uh, MLC. Uh, we also do a uh, quality check on the MR image and also on the geometry uh, accuracy of the MR image. And for monthly tests, we do a uh, prof pro using a profiler to check the uh, profile, the lateral uh, X axis and Y axis profile, and also the diagonal axis, the two diagonal axis, and compare with the benchmark. Uh, when we, after we uh, uh, did the water tank, we did some, uh, a lot of benchmark data, including the profile, uh, using a profiler. And we also do a, uh, a monthly, the MR and MV isocenter alignment check. So we use a phantom uh, supplied by elector and we run a automatic sequence uh, uh, using the MR uh, control uh, to run the sequence. It run, it take first using the, uh, the uh, MV imager to take image of the phantom at several uh, uh, angles, different angles, and then calculate the isocenter location and then we run a MR image uh, on this phantom, and then the software will compare the two isocenter and indicate whether it's a pass or fail. And the tolerance is one millimeter. Uh, in this case, we can get a 0.3 uh, millimeter in X axis and zero error in Y and uh, 0.27, minus 0.27 millimeter in exact axis. So it's a monthly test on the geometrical uh, accuracy of the isocenters. And we also do a uh, reference, deliver a reference uh, arc check uh, uh, plan, delivery, a complex uh, human plan, and check the consistency compared with the benchmark data to ensure the uh, beam delivery and the dosimetry are in order. And then in annually, uh, over the year, uh, we do an annual check. Uh, we have to use the water phantom to uh, do the, some measurement on just to validate the beam data uh, still consistent, uh, the output factors, the absolute dose calibration, uh, the uh, TPR, uh, and also the monitor linearity, uh, and also uh, uh, the uh, MLC con uh, transmission, uh, MLC uh, check using film, uh, and also the radius and isocenter. So uh, these are typical tests we are have been uh, working on uh, using uh, uh, SQA program. Uh, for patient dosimetry, uh, we also uh, based on measurement, we, we want to do a complete end-to-end -end measurement for every uh, case uh, using ArcCheck. So all pre-treatment QA are done using ArcCheck, uh, ArcCheck. but during, um, during adaptation uh, therapy, uh, now this, perhaps I show you this uh, workflow diagram uh, in a typical treatment workflow. 
Now, uh, before treatment, we have to do a pre-treatment uh, plan QA using arc check. And then after that, the patient, uh, when the patient come in, uh, uh, set up and then do a MR uh, position verification. And then the images uh, are used for um, uh, uh, doing adaptation planning. It, it register with the either planning CT or uh, uh, planning MR uh, to check the uh, the geometry of the of the structures and target uh, and so on, so that uh, any changes or any um, uh, deviation between the original plan, the original reference plan, uh, the structure need to be amended, and then uh, we, uh, and then calculation uh, 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 treatment calculation is done. Uh, what we call a adaptation process. It's a quite a uh, sophisticated process. Probably it need at another hour and then talk on about workflow and adaptation therapy. So after the plan is completed online, uh, then the oncologist will approve the plan and then we will do a uh, quality check on the adaptation plan using uh, independent calculator, we use RECCAL. So we do an independent MU calculation. Uh, if it meet within certain criteria and then we uh, proceed with the treatment. Uh, before that is uh, another MV, uh, MRI uh, verifica verification. When that is okay, and then the beam can be delivered. After that, we will do a post-treatment plan QA. If the plan involves what we call adapt to shape uh, replanning, then the, there would be a lot of uh, changes, including optimization and also some certain control structure would be amended. So it will, we regard that as a new plan. We would do a post-treatment uh, QA uh, for uh, treatment with, that, with minimal uh, changes, what we call adapt to shape, uh, to, to position, then initially we do a post-treatment plan also, uh, a QA also, but now we don't do that anymore. So we only do uh, adaptation plan for adapt to shape kind of uh, adaptation. And then we do a post-treatment uh, plan QA. And these are typical uh, data uh, that we get for our, uh, uh, our plan. So for those measurements, uh, our plan are uh, well within, uh, tip, uh, the, the mean is 0.7% with 1.9% uh, standard deviation. And this is the kind of those distribution uh, uh, errors. So it's, uh, so no data uh, is worse than 5%. Uh, most of them is well within 4%. Uh, 4%. And these are the gamma passing rate for uh, 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 the previous plans. 99% uh, for uh, uh, gamma uh, criteria of 3% or 3 millimeter uh, uh, distance to agreement. 97% uh, uh, for a, a passing criteria of 2% uh, those difference and 2 millimeter uh, distance to agreement. So that ends my slide, my talk, and thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Professor K.Y. Chung, for your excellent presentation uh, of actually using MR Linux and uh, the dosimetry challenges and the physics uh, uh, things which you have come across while using MR Linux. Can you just unshare your uh, PPT? Uh, so unshare. there are okay. questions the participant have put in, a lot of questions they have put in, but I will try to get as much as possible the question to you. And many of the participants have asked 
why the ssd of this mr linac is 133.5 cm and not 100 cm and why energy is 7 mv and can there be more energy linear accelerator also with mr linac okay let me ask, uh, answer the second question first why 7 mv uh, 7 mv is uh, the accelerator developed by electa um uh it just happened to be 7 mv uh i don't know why uh, maybe the question should be addressed to elector <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but okay uh, that's what we get uh, uh i don't know why elector supplies 7 not 6 uh on the first question why the ssd is not 100 now again because the we have a emma unit um, mri system built in uh in the linux so we have the cryo step on the way so the cryo step is um uh in order to create sufficient space for treating the patient to put the patient inside the bowl so we have to have a long distance to to cater for the mr system and also space for treating the patient so that's why we have a long distance from the x-ray source the target uh that is the isocenter is 1.3 uh 4 5 i think that's the uh, as a center link so um that relate to the ssd okay so this is because of the outside uh, and the mr the assembly the yeah. mechanism doesn't allow to shorten the ssd that's the thing yeah. what <laughs> that's the problem okay okay now a lot of questions are there on the qqc and but Bruce. maybe make sorry and maybe i go back to the 7 mv again there is a possibility because the 7 mv is based on the uh, percentage depth stores the when you maybe the linear itself is a 6 mv linear but when you have a long fsd effectively yeah. you increase the percentage depth stores value so that probably is the reason why you end up to a 7 mv okay so because, because of long fsd SSD is much 133.5 yeah. cm yeah. and therefore to get the uh, PDD good PDD uh, yeah. you have to have little more energy than the 6 so they have might have gone for 7 MV okay so there are a lot of questions on the QA and dosimetry and other aspects and they have asked uh, is that the normal uh, dosimetry and QA equipment can we use into the MR Linux or there are specific qa and qc equipment for mr linac only and if yes are how many vendors they are marketing these kind of mr linac qa qc equipment or dosimetry equipments yeah okay um ordinary uh chambers uh normally they are may not be suitable uh they may or may not depending on uh how the detector the chambers were constructed if there is no ferromagnetic uh, substances in the chamber then uh if it's only the cap you know a, a chamber they have connector and cap if it is only the cap which are ferromagnetic you can remove them and you may be able to use the chamber but you need to confirm with the manufacturer what kind of materials are then inside the chamber uh so that you may or may not be able to use it uh it is advisable at least for uh using absolute dose calibration uh for those absolute dose measurement uh it's advisable to use uh uh spe specially designed mr compatible uh, uh detectors uh because of the Uh, current quality and response of the detectors so it uh, uh, i would uh, for accurate measurement i would use uh, certified uh, detectors um now those mr compatible detectors are available from uh, ptw uh 
I think there are um, uh, standard imaging uh, uh, may be uh, 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 also available from them. I'm not quite sure, but all the detectors I'm using are PDW. I'm sure uh, there are more coming. Uh, uh, if not now, it will be in, fu in the future uh, because of the uh, uh, increasing number of Emma uh, Linux uh, uh, users uh, on the way. Oh, okay, and you mentioned about the arc check, uh, the MR. So it is arc check is the same which we use for the Linux, or it is specifically designed for the MR Linux. No, it's uh, specifically designed for MR uh, Linux. It's more, much more expensive. It's MR specially designed for MR uh, uh, unit. So uh, I won't use the. Uh, the conventional one inside the MR index because of the material. There are so many metallic material inside the uh, system. Uh, some of them may be ferromagnetic. So uh, an ArcTech, which is manufactured by uh, Sun Nuclear, uh, they uh, can confirm whether your existing one is uh, compatible or not. But uh, they make specifically uh, ArcTech unit compatible for MR units, so uh, so uh, that is what we are using now. Okay, and some uh, part also the uh, the other profiler also MR compatible profiler. So uh, every dose meter uh, that you want to use in your center uh, in the MR unit uh, has to be MR compatible. Uh, if you are not sure, confirm with the manufacturer. And there is also a question that is the phantom custom made or uh, they are general? Uh, no, the uh, blue phantom I've sh shown you, it's the standard uh, blue phantom, it's the same. Uh, so uh, it's, uh, 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 it's, it's compatible, at least the one the set we are using, uh, it, they work pretty well. So it's the same uh, unit that uh, we bought for conventional Linux and MR Linux. It's the same. Okay, same Phantom can be used. Same Phantom, yeah. Uh, because it doesn't contain any uh, paramagnetic or ferromagnetic materials, so as, it can. Yeah, as far as I know. Uh, and we test it also, and it seems to work very well. Okay. Uh, some questions are also there on the planning and designing of the MR Linux room. How and what extra you have to do if I'm planning, for example, seven MV just Linux or a tomotherapy machine, uh, the uh, room and the designing of the MR Linux room, uh, how I'm going to do that thing and what kind of shielding material, uh, any specific material is used for MR Linux? Uh, yeah, uh, this is a, a challenging question. Uh, they have now. Electra has published a planning guide. Uh, everyone uh, would can make a request for uh, such a document if they are interested on installation of MR Linux. They will provide you with a very good guide. And uh, there are specific requirements about uh, met metal column and metal plates, uh, which are ferromagnetic. Uh, uh, materials. So there are specific requirement uh, definition and also um, uh, there are requirement about moving metal objects nearby so that uh, it doesn't interfere with the MR. So it's the same similar to MR imaging. So the planning for uh, the uh, specific requirement regarding ferromagnetic would be similar to MR imaging system. And then you have the shielding. The shielding is the same as uh, conventional Linux. If it's a, a 7 MV, it would be a 7 MV uh, data calculation. So uh, uh, we, for example, we use a lot of structure. Uh, we are using uh, high density concrete. So we use a lot of steel. And it seem, that doesn't seem to uh, affect the image quality at all, although uh, a lot of uh, stringent requirement about steel structure. And we use a lot of steel structure uh, for holding 
those high density concrete because the space uh, limitation, we use uh, uh, a concrete brick make up of um, uh, a lot of high density substances, maybe some metallic uh, substances. Uh, it's a five gram per cc uh, density compared to conventional uh, concrete of 2.34, uh, 2.35. It's a double the conventional uh, concrete density, so we can make the wall thinner, and it seems to work very well. Because these questions are from the regulatory board for the planning and these things, because uh, even in India, if MR Linac is going to come, the uh, regulatory board has to approve those plans. So is the room size uh, is any different than the just simple Linac and uh, MR Linac? Uh, any larger spaces required? Yeah. required? Uh, the space is not significant uh, different from uh, conventional linac. Now the MR linac because the couch are not uh, the couch do not rotate. Yeah, the couch does not rotate. So the MR the linac itself uh, does not require a lot of space. Smaller than a conventional, just similar to a tomotherapy but it needs a technical room next to it. So that occupy a, a, some space. So the size of an MR linear is similar to a conventional MR linear, the total space requirement. So it's not significant difference. Does the strong magnetic field have any effect on the PDD? Yes, a slight effect on PDD. As I show you, uh, 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 the the shift is tend to shift the peak, the uh, uh, depth of maximum towards the surface. So uh, compared to conventional linac, the uh, uh, compared to uh, for the same beam without and with magnetic field, the, uh, the 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 one with magnetic field tend to be looks like lower energy, slightly shift to the left, slightly only. If you look at my PowerPoint, only a small okay. change. So will it increase the uh, skin dose and also because no. of the no. secondary uh, electron, secondary electron which are coming out and they may, because of the magnetic field, they may return back and then they may give a uh, uh, more dose to the skin? Is it? No. Uh, no. no. Uh, now, uh, let me uh, put it two way. Uh, the skin, where the beam entry is, the skin dose is much smaller where the beam entry onto the skin. But when the beam exit the, at the back of the beam, uh, uh, you know, uh, when, uh, when, when you irradiate a patient on the head, the beam entry point, the skin dose is smaller than conventional linear. But the exit point, the skin dose is higher because of the uh, return effect of the electron. So you need to have some bolus at the exit point, at the exit side of the skin, to reduce the skin uh, dose. That's the return or, of the yeah. on because of the magnetic field. Yeah. Uh, if you are using single beam, of course, you may need to do it. But if you are using multiple beam, then uh, it may not be necessary because you spread out the, uh, uh, the, yeah. uh, the dose. Yeah. And then uh, questions are there, what is average patient treatment time and the throughput on the machine every hour, how much patient we can treat and how the okay. cost effectiveness of uh, uh, this uh, gadget, new gadget MR Linux. Uh, now the workflow uh, and the workload, uh, the time inside the treatment room where uh, the patient uh, from inside uh, the, to go in the uh, treatment room and then go out, the total amount of time depending uh, on the kind of adaptation uh, uh, treatment. How, if it is a complex uh, adaptation, means adapt to shape, then the time will be longer. That would typically take about 40 minutes to maybe up to an hour, maybe typically 45 minutes. But if it's a simple adaptation, adapt to position, that will typically take 20 to 30 minutes. So it depending on how much uh, changes are required in doing the adaptation therapy uh, planning process. So it typically okay. a simple 
uh, adaptation, 20 to 30 minutes, more complex adaptation, uh, 40 to uh, maybe an hour. So typically. So simple planning, it may two patients. Simple adaptation. Per hour, yes. per, per per hour two, and then yeah. complex, yeah. So yeah. maybe in a uh, entire day of maybe 12 hours working, you may treat about 15 to 20 patients at the most. Yeah, typically. Yeah. And uh, then but adaptive but planning. Let me, you said. Okay. Yeah. Let me one more say one more thing about uh, uh, MR Linux. Maybe the number of patients you treat per hour or per day is small. The purpose of using MR Linux because its accuracy uh, and also the dosimetry advantage of adaptation, uh, the, you should aim at treating with less fraction so that you don't, so that you can treat more patients in a month. Uh, you, uh, although you treat less patients in a day, but with less fraction, you can treat more patients in a month. That's the idea. And uh, there are also questions that uh, uh, the MR bore which you have got, is it sufficient to uh, treat a patient of a CA brace with the breast board? Uh, that's difficult because the, uh, the bore is uh, 70 cm. Uh, you cannot uh, put a, a breast board uh, inside the bore, so no way. So you have to think of other way. Okay. So there are another interesting question is that uh, the MR contrast gadolinium, do you use uh, MR contrast no. gadolinium? No. 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 So uh, that, that was a question that does it affect the dosimetry no. and certainly it will affect the dosimetry. No, you, we don't need to because uh, with uh, uh, MR or uh, with the MR image, you, uh, you can actually see the uh, target uh, or, and also the soft tissue structure pretty well. So uh, uh, when you use uh, gadolinia for contrast, it's only for uh, diagnosis, especially a uh, patient with very small target, very small lesions that uh, uh, when you are searched for the lesion, then you would use contrast. But once the lesion is known, it's there, you, it's easier to identify. So we don't use that. Well, there are a lot many questions actually. Uh... Uh, does with a pacemaker or any other patient can be treated? I, I, to my knowledge, I think uh, whatever MR contraindicated, those patients may not be able to treat it yeah. on the MR. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, so, same same as MR imaging. MR, yeah. yeah. Hello? Uh, or any other coils in uh, uh, while uh, MR Linac uh, treatment? The price? Sorry? MR what? MR Sorry? coils, body coils, MR coils, body coils. I don't understand what. The body coils, the coils, the the MR coils. The cryogen, do you mean? Coils, the head coil, the. Oh, uh, oh, sorry, I, I get you now. The coil, the coil. Yeah, yeah. it comes mm -hmm. with. Uh, now for treatment, it comes with. So far, only one coil. That coil applied to all every part of the uh, treatment site. So uh, there is only one coil uh, for the are, treatment for the treatment unit. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of questions. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, tell me. Tell uh, me. Yeah. Because uh, the coil has to be specifically designed so so that it doesn't interfere or minimal interfere with the uh, beam, uh, 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 the, the radiation beam. So. Um, and also, uh, it fit every body, every site. So it has to be uh, uh, quite separate from the body. Uh, it's quite uh, certain clearance is available to ensure that it fit every body and it fit every uh, site. So uh, there are questions, but already we are running uh, short of time now. So once again, I thank uh, Professor K. Y. Chung for the excellent talk on uh, uh, the physics of uh, aspects of the clinical implementation of MR LINAC. And also thank all the participants for joining and asking questions, making this very lively session. 
the recording of this webinar will be available in 2 3 days on the iomp website and in this series the next webinar will be on 20th july uh, that is uh, professor john damilik will be talking about this so i will request you to please join to that thing also i will request all of you to give your feedback and any topic you need uh, your remarks will be very very helpful for us for the future planning once again i thank you all for joining this webinar thank you professor k y chung thank you dr professor magdalena for all the technical support thank you professor madan rehani for the encouragement and then we close this uh, webinar session have a nice time and be take care be safe in this covid looking forward to meet you on 20th of uh, july for the next webinar in this series so thank you all of you thank you very much yeah, thank, thank you. you thank you everyone yeah.